Hey everyone and thanks for joining me for this painting video. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I painted this realistic apple. I think painting still lifes and fruits like elements of nature and keeping it simple is a great way to practice and learn how to oil paint and that's actually how I started learning how to draw and paint realistically when I was a child. I focused a lot on fruits and flowers. So I went ahead and set up a reference using an old shirt and an apple and you can paint from life or a photo. I went ahead and took some photos and ended up choosing this one to use as a reference and I have a free download link for you if you'd like to follow along and practice for yourself that will be in the description. I used a total of seven colors for this painting and here they are. Cadmium lemon, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and titanium white. I run out of this color a lot so I usually just get a huge tube to last me a long time. All these colors can be bought individually or you can find them in an oil paint set already containing some basic colors and I suggest looking online for student grade kits because they're a lot less expensive than professional oil paint, especially if you're starting out. I've linked my favorite in the description. We're also going to need something to mix with the paint known as the medium. I like to use something called Galkid. It's an alkid resin medium and it speeds up the drying time. To mix the medium and clean my brushes while I work, I use Gamzol. It's an odorless mineral spirits paint thinner. For my surface to paint on, I'm using canvas paper and it actually does have a canvas texture when you look up close. You can use actual canvas that's already been primed or whatever you want. I'm just using canvas paper because I like to chop it up into pieces and it's just more convenient for painting small studies. For this apple painting, I cut it into six by six inches. To keep the canvas paper sturdy and in one place while I'm painting, I taped it to this wooden board as backing. Next, I used an acrylic gesso to prime the surface that I'm painting on. Gesso gives the oil paint something to bind to instead of the paper. Most times, if you buy pre-stretched canvases, they're usually already primed so you don't have to do this and it normally does specify that on the packaging that it has been primed already. This canvas paper is unprimed, but technically I don't really need to prime it. It works fine without it, I just noticed that the oil paint applies a lot better to the surface if it has been gessoed. I also have a priming tutorial for wood panels if you're interested in that, but for this canvas paper, unfortunately, the gesso did warp the canvas paper as it dries, uh, which actually goes away once I started painting on it, but just a heads up, if you're priming paper, this does tend to happen. You can expect some warping. I don't really mind because this is just a study and not one of my serious oil paintings that I spend several weeks on. Once the gesso had dried, I used a very fine sandpaper to smooth out the surface. I really don't like painting on a blank white surface, so what I usually do is tone my canvas. To do this, I'm dipping my brush into my Gamzol, the paint thinner, and then mixing that brush with my burnt sienna. It gives it almost a watercolor-like consistency. It's a super diluted layer, and I just cover the entire surface with this. I've been doing this for a few years now and painting this way, and I love it. I don't think I can ever go back to just painting on a blank white surface. Um, I also have a video about underpaintings explaining this more in depth so if you're curious as to why I do this and why it's helpful to me please watch that video it will be linked in the description. After I tone the canvas I usually give it about an hour sometimes a few hours to dry. Once the surface is dry to the touch I went ahead and started drawing the outline of the shapes that I saw of the apple going off of the reference. Um, normally what I do is I actually just create another underpainting and I do this sketch with paint with the same color that I used for toning the canvas, but I think for beginners it's just simpler and easier to use a pencil to draw out all your basic shapes. I kind of sketch out where I saw some shadow outline, um, some highlights, and just the shape of the apple and some of the, um, the fabric that's surrounding it. Next, it's time to mix my medium. So I'm using Galkid and I'm pouring a little bit into this dish, which I've used a hundred times, hence it's got all this dried up paint on it. Then I'm taking my Gamzol, which is the paint thinner, and I'm pouring in a little bit into that same dish with the Galkid already in there. I'm aiming for a 50-50 ratio. It does not have to be completely perfect, but this is just what I'm estimating. And then I use the end of my paintbrush to mix it all up so that the Galkid and the Gamzol is mixed. 
And this is our medium. This is what we will be adding to our palette as we're working. And this is gonna make the paint flow more smoothly and just make it more manageable to work with. I also have some Gamzol just by itself in a separate jar nearby. And this is what I'll be rinsing and cleaning my brushes in as I'm painting. The brushes I'm using are Filberts and liners. The Filbert looks like this. It's got this like wide but rounded tip and then it's flat when you turn it to the side. And then a liner is pretty self-explanatory. It's just for painting details. I've got my paper towel to the side for wiping my brush. And this is my palette and how I've laid out all the colors. So I'm picking up some cadmium red light on my brush and then I decided to turn my palette sideways because as I'm mixing colors, I usually point my brush strokes downward so it just made more sense, like it was more comfortable. I picked up a little bit of medium on my brush, not too much, you don't want to add too much, you don't want to water it down too much, just a little bit. Uh, then I added some alizarin crimson to that and mixed it in with the cadmium red light and also ultramarine blue and I just kept adding those colors in gradually to get the right color I needed and this color was for some of the shadow parts of the apple. They were like the darker, deeper reds. And as I mix these colors and apply them to the painting, I will be gradually dipping my brush into that little medium dish ever so slightly. Again, not too much because it will completely water down the colors and we're not trying to do that. So now I'm just placing this color we mixed into the parts of the apple where I saw it. It doesn't have to be perfect or 100% accurate and flawless. I'm just using the reference as a stepping stone to figure out which colors need to go where. And that's basically how you learn how to paint. You look at things and you recreate them and express them through your eyes and your hands. The best way to learn is to use references because how are you gonna know how to paint something realistically if you haven't painted it a bunch of times? It's kind of like wiring your brain and training yourself to see things, training your eyes to learn how to see colors and shapes, how they connect and interact with each other. I'm taking that same brush with the same color on it and I'm bringing in more cadmium red light and then some yellow ochre into that just to add some earthy yellows to this. And this is for the bottom right part of the apple. It's a little bit more yellow, not quite as dark of a red. So that's what I'm expanding on. And that color does transition as a bit of a gradient from that darker shadow we just used. So I'm just gradually blending it in with that color I placed down. Since these colors all kind of blend together softly, I don't have to really wipe my brush off. I'm just taking some cadmium red light and blending it in with that prior color, but it is a much lighter color that I need. I added a little bit of alizarin crimson and then dip my brush into my medium ever so slightly, not too much. And this color is for the much brighter reds that you can see in the apple. <laughs> Then I blended that brighter red into the darker shadow color to paint the left outline of the apple. Those two colors kind of transition. Then I took some cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, and titanium white, and then went back to the alizarin crimson and cadmium red light to create this bright red color for some of the bright red parts of the apple, specifically the left part, which has a little bit more of a, a magenta lean to it. Then I brought in some cadmium lemon to add a little bit of an orange color to that bright red for the parts of the apple that you can clearly see have yellows in them. I'm just placing that color down and then blending it with some of the other colors and if I paint over the shadow color it's okay, I can always just build it up again. It's not that hard to recreate that color. I also brought in some yellow ochre and that's for the bottom right part of the apple where it's like a darker shadow color but there's clearly some yellows there. At this point I'm painting around the highlight that you can see is like this little pink colored highlight on the left upper part of the apple and I'm also leaving a space where there's that little yellow bit in the middle. I'm just leaving that space open so I can paint it in later.
now that we've covered most of the reds, which we'll come back to in a little bit, I'm just going to clean off my brush to get it ready for the yellows. However, what I like to do normally is use one brush for a different color group, like a brush for the yellows, a brush for reds, and another brush for blues. That way you don't have to keep cleaning your brush over and over again. But for the sake of this video, for whatever reason, I just decided to use a limited amount of brushes. And just to give you a little closer look, this is what we have so far. So now I'm just taking some cadmium lemon ultramarine blue, just a little bit more <laughs> ultramarine blue, and titanium white, and some yellow ochre. And this color that we're mixing right now, I'm just gradually adding more yellow ochre and ultramarine blue just to get it the perfect color. It's like a greenish, uh, earthy yellow. And this is for some of these parts of the apple. It's like a green little cone-shaped crater where the stalk of the apple dips. I'm also trying to paint with these thin vertical strokes, like an up and down motion, because I'm trying to simulate the way the colors naturally disperse in the tissues of the apple. I'm taking that yellow ochre color already on my brush, adding some cadmium lemon, some titanium white, and a little bit of the bright red from the previous color, and some of it was also on my brush from the painting. I actually just picked some of it up, and I'm painting the little yellow spot in the apple that I left blank before. Adding some cadmium lemon with more red. So the center part's more yellow, but then on the edges it kind of fades into the red. It's like a nice little blend. It's like a very soft orange color. So I'm, as I'm painting that yellow color in the center, um, I'm just blending it with the red surrounding it. Next, I'm taking titanium white, adding it to that yellow ochre, and dipping my brush into the medium just a little bit, and I'm just painting the side of the apple. There's more yellow on it, and I am going to touch it up gradually and brighten up some of these yellow parts. I'm just sort of color blocking and getting all the blank areas covered, but I'm adding some cadmium lemon to that, and then bringing it into the slightly orangey color at the bottom of the reds there. but as I paint, I'm gradually getting some red on my brush, which is okay because all of these colors blend and transition into each other regardless, so that's totally fine. So I'm taking more cadmium lemon, just kind of straight up, and then adding it to that little center part there, just getting more cadmium lemon, and then some ultramarine blue to make it a greener color. Just mixing that together and adding a little bit of medium. And then I'm bringing that color down into the lower right part of the apple. Kind of bringing that color into some of the other greenish yellow parts of the apple, just trying to get as much covered and blended as I can. Now I picked up a clean brush and I'm going back to some of those darkest red shadow colors that I made and I'm just touching up those parts that got a little bit painted over or I feel need to be darker, just kind of going back over them and intensifying them. And 
touching up some of the outline up at the top where the shadow of the back of the apple which we can't see but it does start up at the top and we can sort of see it and that outline also helps give it a more realistic appearance and it gives it more depth and dimension. Still using that darkest red, almost maroon uh, shadow color and I'm just again intensifying and touching up those shadows to give the apple more dimension. So now there are just two blanks left in the apple that haven't been painted. That's the highlight and the stock. So we're going to just look at the reference here and to observe the highlight you can see that the left of the highlight has a bit of a magenta to it and then towards the right it looks like there's more yellows in that color so it leans towards the orange but they're both very very close to each other and it's obviously not just like a bright white it wouldn't look right and highlights are never really just white there's usually like other colors in them like yellows or pinks or purples it just depends on the light that's being reflected off of it and the actual color of the subject seeing as this is a very heavily red subject if we shine a bright light to it the highlight might appear a little bit pink and it also the texture of the apple doesn't reflect it perfectly um, it absorbs some of the light and it makes it kind of faded. I also had two sources of light reflecting off of this apple which is why the highlight is broken up into two separate sections. We have the window of my studio which also had blue in the sky so that brightness uh, and the blue combined probably created this pink color as it mixed with the red while it was reflecting off the apple. And then the second source is my studio light, which is just a warm white light on its own. And that's probably why it appears more orange because there's really no blue tones reflecting off of it. So for the highlight color to start, I'm taking titanium white, some alizarin crimson, mixing those together and adding a little bit of cadmium red light little more <laughs> and then I'm adding a medium to the color which was actually too much and the color did not apply correctly so I had to like wipe the brush down and then mix it in so that it wasn't so watered down you got to be careful sometimes because if you add too much medium um, it's gonna water down the paint and it just won't apply correctly it'll be very hard to work with so just a little bit should be enough and then I dip my brush into some of that bright red just to kind of mix those colors together as well. And I'm just trying to create this shape of the highlight. Um, as you can see in the reference, it's got a shape to it. <laughs> it's technically like two separate highlights, but they, they kind of blend together. Um, and this was actually a little bit challenging to get it quite right. And it still didn't end up um, perfect, which is fine. So I'm just painting like this little pink area around the two highlights and one of them is obviously going to be like a, a brighter pink and the other one's going to have a little bit more orange to it but I think I started out with putting pink in both of them and then I'm going to warm up the one on the right that has more orange. So I'm taking more cadmium red light and just working up some of those parts above the apple and below the highlight. And then I started applying that same red and sort of dabbing it around the highlight colors. It was already the bright light pink paint that I made. So it's just blending in with it and creating this soft haze to create that fuzzy effect of the reflection of the lights. At this point, I'm taking some of that light pink paint I made and combining it with cadmium lemon and some of that orange color with the cadmium red in it. And this is to warm up that right highlight. As we saw, it wasn't quite as pink as the one on the left. At this point I'm taking cadmium red light and combining it with a little bit of that pink highlight color I mixed earlier and it's right near the yellows and I will add yellows eventually as well. And I'm just warming up and brightening up some of that 
area that's surrounding the highlight and a little bit further into the apple. And then once I added a little bit more yellow, I just painted just the other, like brought, brightened up some of the other red parts of the apple that I felt like they needed a little bit more saturation. And then using this peachy color and some yellows, I'm just trying to go with the direction of the apple and the way the colors appear as they come out of that little dip with the stalk. That's going to create the illusion that there's like a round little crater there. Um, I'm trying to <laughs> explain this to the best of my ability. I'm sorry if I'm not making any sense, but um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Using the reference as a gauge to see how the colors work and what brush strokes you should use definitely helps. And I'm not trying to recreate it exactly as it is. I'm just using it as a stepping stone again, just to approximate what I have to do. And you can see in the reference, some of those greens are emerging almost in like a blast or like a firework type of pattern. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, but that's basically what I'm just trying to paint. And I went back with reds into some of the shadow parts just to warm them up and saturate them a bit more. Much of what I've been doing is just trying to continue to build the natural color patterns on the apple or the way the color naturally is dispersed. So I'm just taking some reds and like putting those very thin brush strokes in the same direction as I see it in the actual apple. Next, I'm taking some ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, mixing it all into that red color. We're kind of actually just recreating the old shadow color, and I'm going back to that and intensifying it a bit more, also painting it so that it does fit the natural dispersion of the colors, and just doing that kind of all over anywhere I feel like it needs to be intensified or just to build up that natural color pattern more. I feel a little bit like a broken record because I'm just repeating myself at this point, but honestly, so much of the painting process is going back to things and building on them more. Um, we started with just applying the basic colors we saw, and then we built on them some more, we intensified them where they needed to be brighter, we painted over them a few times, and it's, it's okay, like that's a lot of the process. Um, as you go further into a piece, you're able to see more that needs to be done. And sometimes if you're stuck on a painting, it's good to just walk away for a few hours or a few days and then come back to it again. Um, and you'll have fresh eyes, a fresh perspective, and you'll probably be able to fix some of the errors you made before or see what else you need to do if you were stuck on it. And here I'm just blending some of the reds in with the little yellow spot in the middle there just to make it look more natural. So we have just one last blank spot, except for the surrounding area of the background, but on the apple, we've just got the stock left to paint. So now we're gonna start working on that along with some of the shadows surrounding it. So I'm taking ultramarine blue with a clean brush, yellow ochre, it's creating this nice earthy green. I'm adding some burnt sienna to it. A Little bit of, a little bit more yellow ochre more burnt sienna just trying to make this dark earthy color and a little bit of cadmium lemon and I'm just starting to slowly paint the little shape of the stock which you can see in the reference it's got some shadow and light to it as well and I'm also putting this color in some of the surrounding area in the little dip where that stock is Hard for me to explain the anatomy of an apple for some reason, <laughs> but I hope that I'm making sense, you guys. I really want to help you with your art. <laughs> so I'm just using that same color, building up some of those little shadows in that little cone there. Obviously, the left part isn't hitting the light source, unlike the right part, which has more yellows in it. So that's what I'm trying to create. So I'm brightening up that color a little bit, trying to make it a little bit more green with some of the greener yellows I mixed earlier. 
and just putting that on the other side. And then just bringing it upwards towards the top and blending it slowly and very softly. And of course, if you mess up, you can go back and paint over it. Don't be upset. It's not that big of a deal. Oil paint is generally very forgiving. Now I'm going back to the yellows with some cadmium lemon and yellow ochre and even bringing in some of that lighter green color I mixed earlier. And I'm just painting that little inner inverted cone where the apple colors kind of explode from green, like yellows and greens to red. And I'm just trying to paint that little surrounding area, which you can see in the reference when we zoom in. It's like a yellowish green, and it's there's some shadows there. So that's basically what I'm doing. Now I'm taking cadmium lemon and titanium white and yellow ochre. And it's this much brighter yellow, and I'm just intensifying some of those yellows, the greenish yellows that we saw in the reference from that color explosion that I attempted to describe, but adding some medium to it and just kind of going over that just to saturate and intensify that, give it a little bit more dimension as if there's more light hitting that area and also extending it to the side because it does go to the side some of that yellow and just kind of trying to replicate the again natural color pattern on the apple and there are some yellow dots which you can see in the reference I honestly didn't bother with those I was feeling kind of lazy um, I think as long as you could just get the natural uh, colors to look right then doesn't really matter but if you're really aiming for the highest level of detail and hyper realism then by all means go for it you know spend even more time on this apple make a much better painting than I did um, this to, this is just to give you like an example of what you can do so I brought in some titanium white into that darker shadow color I made for the stock and the, some of the shadows around the stock and I'm just mixing it and creating this earthy green and now I'm painting some of the parts of the stock where they are facing the direction of the light source. So the shadows are going to be on the right and the light source is on the left. So just like our highlight is on the left, it's closest to the light. And I'm just trying to paint the rest of the stock and fill in some of those blank spots. Going back to the shadow color now with a little bit of cadmium lemon. I switched to a detail brush also because that's a much smaller area to paint. So I added some yellow ochre and burnt sienna to that color. And I'm just working up that shape on the stock. Not aiming for perfection, honestly. And that same color is also in the shadows. If it's not the exact same color, it's very, very similar to it. So you don't necessarily want to paint the outlines of things, you just want to paint shadows and highlights. And the way they are next to each other, that's what's going to create the illusion of objects. As you notice, I never really painted like the outline of the apple, it's just some of it's red and some of it's yellow, and it's all about shadows and highlights. Just as long as you put those colors in the right places, it creates the illusion of there being an object there or a shape to it when in reality it's just a bunch of colors you're just smudging them around <laughs> elaborately so I'm going back to some of the orange colors I switched back to a filbert and I'm just touching up the area around the shadow parts I just painted from the stock trying to make it look um, a little bit more rounded I guess and then I went back to some of the shadow colors again and just touching those up Again, I'm just like going back and forth between these colors and between areas of the painting. Um, as I'm painting, my attention switches to different things, as you can very obviously see. And it's just based on where my intuition tells me I, I should put certain colors. Like I'll start painting something and then something else catches my eye that's like kind of in the same area, but I just feel so compelled to work on that and switch my focus. Um, and that's pretty much how I paint. I'm just going to speed this up here a little bit but you can just see that I'm again intensifying the shadows and building up some more of the 
natural patterns of the colors. I guess that wasn't absolutely necessary. I just personally felt like I wanted to do this. Um, I wouldn't suggest copying my exact every move, but actually figuring out on your own by looking at the reference yourself. So I would consider the apple pretty much almost done at this point. The last thing I had to do was just start on the background, the sheets. My camera cut out, but basically I mixed some ultramarine blue and titanium white and a little bit of the yellows, and it just created this like bluish grayish color. I'm even adding some of the cadmium red that's off to the side there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just creating some of the lighter parts on the fabric. And this is actually where having the toned canvas is very awesome because if you were to paint this color on the blank white canvas, it wouldn't quite look like this. Um, I like being able to paint highlights uh, on the toned canvas. And this one's actually not the exact highlight. It's actually some of the shadow areas. But this is also optional. Like you didn't really need to paint the background. I just wanted it to be like a more complete painting or like a complete study. So that's why I went ahead and painted the fabric parts. But um, the fabric was also kind of blurry in the background. So I, I didn't focus as much on making it very crisp and precise and detailing the crap out of it. I just kind of made it a little bit more painty, if that makes any sense. So now I'm taking a lot of titanium white and I'm trying to create like the lighter highlight color into parts of the fabric where there's obviously way more light hitting them. And on the tone canvas, I love this because you can place the white paint down and you can see <laughs> the white paint clearly and it's a lot lighter than the background versus painting on a blank background where it wouldn't have this effect. You would just have like highlight on highlight. So I love being able to create a little bit of a tone um, to the canvas for this exact reason because I also like to work with highlights and on the blank canvas, highlights don't really show up that well. So yay. <laughs> Yay highlights and yay tone canvases. So yeah, I mean the background is just, it's pretty self-explanatory. Applying the same concept that we did for the apple, I'm just looking at my reference to translate those colors into paint and then express them on the canvas. So once the majority of the highlight areas were covered, I figured it was time to start on some of the darker shadow colors of the fabric. So I'm taking ultramarine blue, combining it with some of the stock color that I made for the shadows in the apple where the stock is, and I'm just blending that in with some of the highlight colors and just placing them under the apple and basically anywhere where there's shadow. And as you can see, I clearly used some of the, <laughs> the earthy brown I made earlier. And I even added some of the reds, the shadowy reds. Um, now in my painting, the shadows are a lot bluer than in the reference. I think same thing for the highlights. Um, the way I edited my reference of the apple, I gave it a little bit of a green tone and I think that made it look more green. Um, in real life, I feel like they're closer to what they actually look like, but in the reference, they're definitely a little bit greener. So, but that's okay. I mean, like, I didn't really care. I wasn't going for like 100% accuracy. I was just kind of over it at that point and just wanted to get the background done just to get this painting to look more complete. So I created like a grayish bluish tone when really it should have had a little bit more yellows in it, but I think it also, um, the way it shows up on camera, the way it was filmed, it also makes it look a little bit warmer as well. I feel like if you look at the painting in person, it does look a little bit greener, but that's okay. Nothing crazy. So basically the shadow color was mixed with ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, um, cadmium red, burnt sienna, and some cadmium lemon, and then adding varying, varying amounts of white paint to it 
um, basically determine whether it was like going to be an intense shadow, a highlight, or a midtone. But that's the general um, general colors I used for that. And you can see it's even blending with some of the reds and bringing in more yellow ochre, burnt sienna. And that's pretty much the shadow color I made. And yeah, I just covered it everywhere. <laughs> and that's basically it. I mean, there's not that much to it. Um, I don't think that me babying you through every single brush stroke is going to be very helpful. I think just observing this as a demonstration and maybe using it as a guide while still figuring out the colors on your own, like maybe this can help you figure them out um, versus having to have no guide whatsoever. But I don't think that you should try and recreate every single brush stroke of mine. You should definitely have your own touch to it and understand it for yourself and be able to analyze the things you look at yourself. Um, learn about shapes and shadows by observing them, by painting them. The more you do this, the better you will become and the more you will start to see. And you'll train your eyes and your mind to do this faster and more accurately. And you won't even need painting tutorials. So. It really is just a matter of practicing as much as you possibly can. Try and paint every day if you can, or at least several times a week. But the more you do it, the better you will become. And that's just the best way to learn. And then eventually, after you've painted so many things, so many different ways, you can just branch out and paint from your head and, and do all kinds of things. Or, you know, use a reference and change it as you're painting it. You don't have to necessarily paint realism. Um, that's just personally what I like to paint, and that's what I find the most fun to paint. But you can incorporate your own fantasy elements or make it more illustrative. It's entirely up to you. You can do whatever you want with your art. Um, I think just practicing painting realism will help you learn how to make things look real, even if you are aiming for a more illustrative style. So in the painting, I'm just continuing to fill in the spaces. I'm working on that fabric background, which in the reference is blurry, so I'm just making it painty. I'm not really aiming for like perfect, precise, accurate details. Um, and I did actually bring in a little bit of yellow ochre uh, into that color. Um, it's like not really the highlight color, but slightly above it. Um, and it's like a great transitional color between the darker shadows and the highlight. There's like some yellows in there I put in. Um, I think it brought it closer to what it is in the reference, but still it's definitely on the bluer side, whereas in the reference they definitely look more green. But that's also just because I edited it that way, so not really a huge deal not to worry about it um this is just a study for fun and just like a basic demonstration and i hope it's helpful and i did jack up the apple shapes a little bit but that's okay because i could just smooth them out and fix them not a big deal so at this point i'm just kind of trying to softly fix the apple shapes which i mean with like a, a dry brush just to blend that in um so now i think i'm gonna try and work on some of the shadow colors here in a second once I'm done crisping up the edges of the apple and working on some more of those little highlight transitions. So there's definitely a much darker shadow at the bottom of the apple so I'm taking ultramarine blue and my arm is doing something taking some burnt sienna and just mixing those two together with some yellow ochre. So we've got a much darker shadow color now. And this is for right underneath the apple where there's the least amount of light in that area. It's much darker and it's gonna help the apple look like it's actually sitting on the fabric and is not quite so plastered looking. So I'm just trying to create that little area there and I'm not trying to make it perfect. And the fact that I have lighter paint um, already there does blend with some of the shadow color, which does affect um, placing it down a bit, but that's fine because I could always just put more paint on my brush so it's not really that big of a deal. And it, it does help me smooth it out also because I can just blend it with the background. So I'm just putting that darker color in various parts. <laughs>
So it seems like I used up a fair amount of that shadow color I made. I'm just gonna mix some more colors. I'm taking ultramarine blue, some cadmium red light and burnt sienna, and yellow ochre, more burnt sienna, and just a whole bunch of colors, <laughs> like the yellows and the reds, and more ultramarine blue on the other side with more burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. Um, some cadmium red light and yellow ochre. And this is starting to make them look more yellow and greenish, which is closer to what we have in the reference. And I'm just using those colors to add some depth to the colors on the fabric, just to make it look more real, give it some more dimension. And I'm still doing the same thing, just painting very intuitively and placing colors down where I see them. And my attention does switch back and forth. I'll think, oh, I see this color in a little shadow over there. And like, I'll just use that same color and place it wherever I see it and then fade it into other colors, and that's pretty much it. Um, I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I've said that so many times already, but um, it is kind of hard to explain and, you know, justify every single brush stroke, and I don't think that's the goal here. I just want to give you a demonstration so that you can use that as an example to also then figure it out yourself. So then I went back to using a bunch of titanium white and just touching up some of those highlights. I added a little bit of medium in there to make the paint more applicable. And I'm just touching up and intensifying some of the lighter parts where there's obviously a lot of light hitting that part of the fabric folds. I wasn't sure if I should continue to leave this part in because it seems very repetitive. I'm just using the same colors going over the same areas and just kind of gradually smoothing them out. It's really not that interesting to me at least watching back on it. I'm like, wow, I just sat there all this time just painting over the same areas with the same colors. But I mean, it's it's the process. It's it's what I do. I you know, I keep going until it looks right to me. And sometimes I just leave it once I'm okay with it, not necessarily once it's perfect, but once I'm somewhat satisfied. And then I went back with the shadows and then started touching up the shadows again. I just kind of went back and forth between working on the lighter colors and the dark ones. And in this part, I did use a color that had a little bit more yellow ochre to it, so you can see the color difference. It leans a little bit more to the yellow side, not quite as blue, it's a little bit more brown at least that color I can see it is um, so yeah I'm just touching all that up and trying to get it to look right to me so that I can finally move on <laughs> from this painting um, and then I decided to mess with the highlights on the apple because they just didn't look right to me and I, I pretty much created the almost the same exact colors as when I was originally painting it I was just trying to uh, redo it. I honestly think I made it worse before I made it better, but you know, something stood out to me and I'm like, nah, I gotta fix this. I honestly think I could have just left it alone, but whatever. I went in there using, like I said, same exact colors and I don't know why I thought I would try and fix it, but I tried. <laughs> it, it ended up really not making that big of a difference, but and that's another part of the process. Sometimes you end up overworking something or trying to fix something that looked flawed before when really it could have just been left alone. That's happened to me so many times, so don't stress it. Uh, hopefully this tutorial has been 
a realistic tutorial and it's not just like put this brush stroke here and put this color there like I did want to um, show you guys that it is a very random and intuitive process at times and I think my painting method is just mine alone like there's so many angles you could take for this this is just my little angle but I do hope that it helps you I'm just gonna fast forward through most of this part I really don't think it's all that important there's really not much useful stuff here the highlight was fine before I'm starting to realize but now I just have to redo it again using the same uh, idea that I explained before as far as like the colors of the highlight it's literally the same thing I'm just redoing it and trying to tweak it and fix it and make it look perfect and failing but that's okay <laughs> um, I did also go back to some of the darker reds that cadmium red with the um, alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue um, I did go back and intensify and work on some of the shadows again just to try and make that look better and just just some tweaking like I always go back to things and paintings I switch around my focus based on what I'm working on and then once I shift my focus for a while I'll look at something that I was working on before and think oh I need to work on this some more so that's pretty much why very intuitive very 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 random <laughs> um, so lastly my finale for this painting and something that I really really love doing now with uh, art studies and I actually was inspired to try this um, from watching Audra Auclair's Instagram story where she does her illustrations and you just peel the tape off of the edges and it's so satisfying to do that and even to watch it back I'm like wow look at that so satisfying <laughs> and I didn't really tape it down perfectly like the edges aren't perfectly even but I don't really mind it's just a study you know I just wanted to demonstrate this but that is the painting I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you guys um, again you can find the reference download in the description of this video or you could just go to my patreon page patreon.com slash lena and the reference is available for free so you don't have to be a patron to download it that's just where I uploaded it where you can download it for free, but it is available to everybody, not only my patrons. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm amazed and applaud you if you have made it this far into the video. Um, if you made it this far, comment pineapples in the comments and I'll know that you are awesome, <laughs> but you're awesome regardless for learning about painting and for expressing yourself and making art. So thank you for watching. I wish you all the best of luck with your work and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.